And during the few moments that we have left, we want to talk right down to earth in a language that everybody here can easily understand. Welcome to Search Talk Live with search engine optimization and marketing experts Robert O'Haver and Caleb McKelvin, powered by the Robert Palmer family of companies. Welcome to another episode of Search Talk Live. I'm Robert O'Haver. With me today, I have my best uh, co-host here, Caleb McKelvin. Caleb, how's it going? Going pretty good, Robert. How about yourself, man? How you doing this wonderful Tuesday? Uh, pretty good. Uh, we are, I, you know, I wanted to start out. I had a crazy situation Monday morning when I came in. Uh, because Google's uh, analytics decided not to work. <laughs> yeah, we've been since, having some issues. Since Wednesday, as far as the search engine optimization part of it, it stopped reporting since last Wednesday. Yeah. and uh, I got a little nervous there on the front end, wondering what was going on. Yeah. When but got, it seems to be across the board, so. Yeah, I got that Moz report in, and it said, you know, I lost all my keywords. And the first thing I'm thinking, oh, my God, my first penalty. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but that wasn't the case, so... Um, what had happened was Google, for some reason, stopped reporting uh, for that one little section. They need to fix that. Yeah, yeah. Thanks ASAP. for the heart attack, Google. Yeah, seriously. Uh, so after I did some research, I realized that wasn't the case. There was no penalty. It was, uh, you know, Google. It was Google's fault. Yeah. Well, today we're going to talk about something that I kind of got on a tirade last week about. I was, I you know, I sit in a uh, a lot in blab and i listened to a lot of of shows and uh uh are not shows but you know people talking about you know saying they're experts and doing this and social media and experts and and seo well i came across one i'm not going to say any names i don't want to put anybody on the spot like that or anything but um um the uh I, I was listening in on a blab, and I didn't have a camera at the time, so it was, uh, anyway, I'm sorry, hang on, I'm having, there we go, a little bit louder, please, okay, um, I was listening in uh, to a blab, and then when it come to find out, this guy, you know, old school, probably, he says he's been an SEO for quite a long time, but everything that he was quoting was something you can get from, really from an article, like, from articles like from 1995 or 2005. Yeah. I mean, it was just, it was just bad, bad information. Like for an instance, it had uh, one of his advice was, you know, don't color your key, your, your keywords. Don't put them in the same color text as the background, uh, which is like something that nobody does anymore. Right. Not even the spammers do this stuff right. anymore because it's, it's so Google's on that stuff. So, well, I think, you know, the biggest thing about it, the, here's what we learned. Here's what I have learned over the years in SEO is that there's a lot of bad information and there's a limited amount of really good, useful information. And you have to be really careful on what you're reading. And when you, we see in things like this, there's platforms, there's so many mediums and so many ways that people can get, have their voice heard and they can reach an audience. And you know, for your website, and this might be a bad analogy, but, you know, you want to go to the best doctor for your health. That's going to give you the best diagnosis, be able to recognize what's wrong, how to cure it, stuff like that. When it comes to SEO, it's kind of the same thing. Uh, it's you want the right diagnosis. You want the right uh, assessment of your, your information, of your analytics, of what's on your website, uh, you know, how your site's performing, what's going wrong, what's going bad, and then the plan of action to get that fixed. Uh, the the problem is, and we say a lot of people brand themselves as an expert. Even on this show, we kind of uh, brand ourselves as experts, but we have one understanding that we don't know everything, and we'll we'll honestly admit to that. I don't know everything. Uh, I'm good at certain things when it comes to SEO, digital marketing, uh, and uh, that you know Robert may not uh, have that much knowledge in. He has a lot more knowledge than I do in a lot of other areas. So we're able to, uh, you know. We work well together. We fit. Uh, that's why Absolutely. we. That's why we ro- really like doing this show because we both bring a different perspective with our years of experience. Uh, the reason why we think this is such a an important topic is not only for those who are getting into the SEO industry, uh, for companies uh, big and small who are looking for SEO services, 
the freelance business is huge in SEO, uh, and they, you know, are a lot of them are hurting websites, hurting SEO efforts and digital marketing efforts. Uh, so it's really important to be able to recognize uh, what someone who is has in-depth knowledge about SEO, able to put those into practice, and those who are doing this uh, for a quick buck or just taking what other people say, what other people do, and selling it to others that they know exactly what they're doing. Uh, there's no, there's nothing bad, uh, in, you know, using other people's knowledge. It's the way you learn, but when you're trying to sell that to somebody else, you know, there ensues the problem. And so we've been witnessing, especially a lot more lately, as this industry continues to grow, that people are branding themselves as they can fix your site. They can, they can offer you SEO services, get you ranked on page one. They know exactly what to do, how to do it. Uh, and you know, they're the best at it and that's a big problem. Yeah. I, I mean, I wish I, when I, I wish I could have jumped in on that blab because man, I, I just wanted to reach through the, you know, just jump out and say, Hey, what are you talking about? But the, this guy was just giving some bad, really, really bad advice. Yeah. A, and you know, it's hard to, you know, to understand if you're new to the industry or if you're just a person, a website owner and you're trying to create a good site you just you don't know who to listen to it's just so much noise out there you've got to know what to look you got to know what to look for you got to know who to listen to um you know that's those type of things those are so important because i mean just i mean that's the like i've said this a million times before but that's one of the reasons me and caleb do this show is because there is so much bad information out there because you know if someone had took, I mean, this guy did have some good, good stuff that he's, he's heard from other places, but, and other, you know, there's, there's people out there that will go out and use this, the bad advice and do this to their site and end up getting penalties or something like that. Yeah. And that's what we're trying to avoid. Right. I mean, that, that it's, it's so important to listen to the right people. And I'm not saying we are the right people, but I mean, I would like to think we are, but yeah. <laughs> we give nothing but best practices, uh, advice. But um, I see, you know, and and not to name any names here either, but I went, I've gone in a bunch of social media blabs as well. And people are, you know, branding themselves as an expert. But when you go in there, they are spewing at the mouth with the same information that every other person gives. Um, you know, as an expert, you really have to give advice and information that nobody else has given because you're an expert. Give something that people can actually get out of it. So that's something to think about. I mean, you you you, you spend I spend a lot of time on this. Me and me and both me and Caleb we're both geeks at this stuff because uh, we we have to stay up to date on algorithms on everything. So yeah. uh, it, it's important to know this stuff. When somebody asks you a question, you want to be able to answer it. But if you want to call into the show. You can call in with your question at 855-722-0006. The show is brought to you by Robert Palmer Family of Companies. And uh, we can take your questions you may have. It could be paid search. It could be uh, organic search, SEO. Yeah. Um, it could be social media. Whatever you want to talk about, just call into the show. Again, it's 855-722-0006. Yeah. Uh questions we do have some some good questions from this past week we'll get to those later okay. uh, but we'll stay on topic with the whole expert um yeah, so, so as far as an i'm sorry i didn't mean to cut no, you go off. ahead go ahead but what i was going to say is as an expert you really need to know your stuff you can't just listen to what somebody else was talking about and then just regurgitate it to someone else that's just that's it's like duplicate content for SEOs. <laughs> Nobody wants to read it. Yeah. Well, I mean, you always need to, as an SEO individual, digital marketing, whatever area you are in, if you cover every area, there are people that know more than you do. There's people that know more than we yeah. do. Uh, and it's always important to learn from those individuals. Um, but what we see far too often is they take from other experts just simply regurgitate exactly what they're saying. And then they, uh, you know, call it their own. They try to sell it to you. Uh, they take some, you know, techniques that they might be using, um, and, you know, apply it to their own. 
So it, it's really important to understand, to be able to recognize, um, you know, if this person actually understands what they're talking about, uh, if they can actually help you, uh, if it's actually going to be beneficial for you. And if you are branding yourself as an SEO expert, that's all well and fine. Um, and you know, if you are, then you should be, but you know, you have to really tread lightly on, uh, with the information that you're providing, how you're providing it. Because what I think what we see far too often is there's, there's quality content out there and there's, there's good topics covered, but it's been beaten like a dead horse on yeah. the same topic over and over again, saying the same thing over and over again. And I'm not going to say that I particularly haven't been, uh, you know, I'm, I'm somebody that doesn't do that. You know, sometimes I do, I find myself saying the same thing over again as somebody else has or beating a dead horse. And that's where you really got to do your research, do your homework, expand your knowledge, uh, focus on the things that you're really good at, uh, and, and find more unique approaches to that. Uh, focus on things that you're not good at learn the basics, you know, and grow that knowledge as well. And that's one of the things I really enjoy about, uh, SEO, SEM, digital marketing, everything in between is that it's continually, you have to continually adapt your techniques. You have to continually grow your knowledge. And, uh, if you're not, you're going to get left in the dust. Yeah. I mean, a good example, I, uh, I would say my SEO mentor would be maybe Rand Fishkin. Yeah. Those type of people. Um, that bring uh, Rand Fishkin. I can, I mean, I, here we go with Moz. Uh, <laughs> All about Moz. We, I mean, he's, he's awesome. He, he really is. Every time he gives you new, I mean, his content is new. It's all insightful. It's, it's, there's nothing regurgitated. He is, uh, that's where I learned my stuff. Uh, some of my stuff anyway. Uh, it's just a great source and he's not going to ever give you any kind of bad information. Yeah. And go ahead. No, I was going to say, um, you know, those, those are great individuals to learn from is Rand Fishkin, uh, you know, using Moz, uh, using all these other SEM rush, all these other guys who really put the time and effort into staying on top of, uh, the entire industry, uh, to providing that information to, you know, uh, they provide the, and they, they do offer some awesome, uh, webinars and stuff like that. You know, you have to continually find the best resources and, and utilize those resources. Um, but you know, it takes a long time to get to where they are. And so that's, yeah. that's why they're the best resources. I mean, they, they have the time, the resources, the manpower to do that kind of thing. And so, uh, you know, that's just why they're Dan, on, they're on top of it. Dan Sullivan too, is another one. Uh, he's the one that puts on the SMX shows. Um, and if you can make it to one of those, I would highly recommend you will come out a savant when you're done. Yeah. <laughs> There's so much good information at those shows. Yeah. Well, uh, I, I think, you know, we, we talk about people branding themselves as an expert. I think one of the big things is, and something that I really kind of stress to people is when you're looking for somebody to, to offer SEO services to handle your SEO for your website, that's where you kind of got to tread lightly mm -hmm. when you're looking for these SEO services. And, um, you know, we see it far too often, the quick fixes or I love the buzzwords and the buzz phrases like, uh, We'll, we'll get you ranked on page one, uh, you for know, $99 for a month. Nine, yeah, <laughs> for one ninety nine a month, we'll get you ranked on page one. We'll get you all these links and followers. We'll get you this and that. Uh, we know how to get you ranked on page one. We know how to, you know, uh, all in one SEO packages and, and all this other stuff. And I just kind of just put my face in my hands when I see that kind of stuff. Cause people do fall for it. Cause they're like, Oh, well, I can get this quick fix. You know, if I just have this quick turnaround on my website, uh, you know, things will change and traffic will increase. My rankings will increase. I'll just do it for a month or two. And then, you know, we'll, we'll see what's going on. But what you really don't realize is that month or two that you're using these services, uh, they're blasting your site, uh, with all this spam, all these bad links and all this other stuff. And then once they're out the door, you're left to pick up the pieces uh, with manual penalties, with a decrease in rankings, with all this other stuff. And so you really have to tread lightly on the services and the, the companies, the individuals that you, uh, approach about, uh, having their SEO services done to your website. Yes. And I think we should go through some of those things. We should really dig into it because <laughs> there's so many, gosh, there's so many easy ways to, yeah. And even this is kind of good notes for 
SEO ex- experts. You really need to kind of listen in on this and take from those, uh, take what you can get from it because we're going to give the people buying your services what to look for. Yeah. So you need to be able to offer these things. Yeah. Now, first and foremost, I would have to say when you first engage with a client, uh, when you first talk to them, not, uh, you know, payment hasn't been done or anything yet. You want to set expectations. One of the first things you need to do is give them. I, what I do with my clients is I give them a questionnaire and it asks questions like, uh, who's your competition? What's their, uh, you know, what are you, what are your services you're offering? What are they offering? What makes you different from your competition? What, uh, what keywords are you thinking you need to rank for? Cause we might find out, you know, later on that, you know, they, they, they don't need to rank for those keywords. Yeah. They're totally different keywords, but, uh, cause I don't expect the client to know that, but we like to get an idea because once with this questionnaire is about 10 questions, that questionnaire gives you a really good roadmap to build a strategy around your client's needs and wants yeah. and requirements. Well, well, I think if you're looking for SEO services and, uh, you approach an agency or an individual who is not wanting to go through those questions, go through those specifics about, uh, you know, what you're looking for, what are your expectations, their expectations, you know, the research that they've done and stuff like that. If, if they're not doing that, yeah, they're not asking your questions, then they're not asking the right questions. They're not worried about your results and, and building a specific strategic, uh, strategic, uh, plan, uh, for you and for your site and to achieve the best results, most likely they have a one size fits all for their, uh, SEO and they're just going to throw it in. And if it works for your site, it does. If it doesn't, then it doesn't, you know, they're not necessarily worried about catering to, to, uh, uh, your specific needs to achieve the best results. And so, you know, questionnaires on the front end are big to, to just focus on that. You know, if it's a local business, the area, uh, what they're exactly. looking for, uh, you know, keywords that they're looking for, you know, all the specifics that you can have a national brand, you know, who they're wanting to target their target audience. Uh, if they're trying to want to want to reach a new audience, uh, you know, what they're looking for, what they think their strengths and weaknesses are. There's so much on the front end that goes to actually building a, a, a plan, a, a digital marketing, SEO, social media, all of it. There's so much that goes into building that plan that if you're approaching somebody and uh, to, to help you with your SEO and they are not investing that time, that research and showing that initiative, then it's not going to be worth your time or your money. Yeah. I mean, from that questionnaire, you can go and get, you can do your competitive analysis. You can do link analysis. If there's an existing site, um, you can do, uh, let's see, you know, what are your, what are the competitors doing? Um, that's competitive analysis. Sorry, <laughs> but, uh, it, it you know look at their their social media or the active there. Look at everything. You get all that information from that questionnaire, right? And then you literally, whether it be paid, uh, organic, or anything, you can build a strategy plan for your client, and then come back to them with a whole bunch of great information on what you found, what your findings are, and what your recommendations as an expert are. Yeah. Uh, and, and then you can take that information. Uh, then once they've in, agreed with that and said, yeah, this is a great idea, and you decide, yeah, we, they want to go with your company, the next thing you need to do is have a, a, a meeting, a, a discussion. This is before you take any money or anything. Set expectations with the client. Show them that you care about what their goals are and what you're planning on doing. Uh, and if you keep that communication bar- com- communication open with those clients, every single month, week, whatever it may be, whatever it needs to be to make that client happy, uh, do it. You know, If you set expectations in the front and you show them that you care on what their goals are, they're going to stay with you. They could be with you for years just off of that first conversation. Yeah. And on the other side, if the expectations they are, have are they're going to get you on page one, it's not going to take that long. You know, they got the the tips and the tricks and, you know, they know what they're doing and they can get all this. They're, they don't. 
You can't see me, but I'm waving a red flag right now. <laughs> yeah, they don't. Um, you know, expectations is SEO does not. It's not an overnight thing to to actually create a a, a high quality website to to meet the needs of your site of your audience of you know everything. It is not something that's going to happen overnight or. Frankly, you'll see changes within the, the first couple of, you know, if you're lucky the first few weeks, the first couple of months, you'll see changes, but it's a, it's a long process to actually achieve the results and, and, and achieve your goals when it comes to digital marketing. Uh, if you want to call in, uh, if you got comments uh, on topic or you got questions, 855-722-0006, 855-722-0006. Hit option one, you'll be directed over to our man Dave, who is managing the phones. Shout out to Mr. Dave, always helping us out here at Search Talk Live. Uh, we are Search Talk Live, Mr. Robert uh, O'Haver. You forgot my name? <laughs> yeah, man, I almost forgot your name. Robert O'Haver, I'm Caleb McKelvin. We are powered by the Robert Palmer family of companies. Shout out to them for uh, for powering this show, helping us out, getting our voices out there. We really appreciate it. You can go to robertpalmerfamilies.com. You'll see like RP Funding, Saving Thousands Radio, Security National Title, and more things like that. <laughs> so, okay. bringing yourself wow. as an expert uh, or, you know, finding those SEO services, there's, there's so much you need to... Uh, the one thing that I think is very important, Robert, and I love this word, I don't know why, but transparency. If that yeah. if that individual, that freelancer, that SEO agency, anybody that you're using, if they are not transparent, if they don't strictly say, here's our reporting system, here's the information we're going to provide, we're going to send you this report you know, your rankings report, your, you know, traffic report, all this stuff. I know you see it in analytics and stuff like that. If they're not sending you a specific report on, uh, on whatever you agree upon or whatever meets your needs or how, however they have it set up, if they are not transparent with the information and the services they're providing and the results they're getting daily, weekly, monthly, then there's going to be an issue. Because if they're not transparent, if they don't have a reporting system, if they're not going to give you, provide the results on what they're doing, they don't necessarily say how they're doing it because, you know, Coca-Cola is not going to give you the secret formula to what makes Coke. But if they're not being transparent on the results and, and uh, you know, what they're seeing, your analytics, you know, links they're building for you. Oh, oh, hold on. <laughs> You're going too far ahead here. I wanted to, to bring something up, though. In the beginning, you want to make sure. Uh, I wanted to finish this. Is your it's all about relationship building. Oh yeah. So you, a you want to make sure that they like you because if they don't like you, they're not going to be a client for you unless you do something amazing for them in the short term, which is not going to happen in SEO. So you want to make sure that you you do set that expectation. Can you keep the communication and make sure you have a strategy laid out for them so they understand where you're at, where you're going. And, and you know, even sit there and do some handholding, show them reporting how, so when you send them reports, they know what they're looking at. Yeah. Because if the, a new person looking at this is it's, it's Japanese, it might as well be written in Japanese because they don't understand it. Right. Um, well, they need, they need tangible information on yeah. the return on their investment. And, and you need to provide that for them. And if a company is not going to provide that for you, then turn around, walk away, because that's something that you need. You need to see what your investment is providing. Sure. And building that relationship is very important. Communication, obviously, is very important in business, uh, in, in whatever type of business you're in, definitely in SEO and digital marketing. So, uh, yeah, having that relationship, building up, being uh, able to communicate on a consistent basis and have that reporting set up and them being able to interpret and communicate that reporting to you because you can read stuff off a of paper, but if they can't tell you how that's impacting uh, your site, your SEO efforts, uh, your audience, your traffic, if they can't interpret that and explain that to you, then they might not know what they're doing. Yep, and I would say that, Another thing you need to watch out for, okay, if they, all they're doing is looking at ranking you and they don't mention anything about your on-page your yeah. site, that is key because that is the core of your where it all starts. 
if you you can rank a page, but it if it brings you no money or conversions, it's no good. Right. Right. So you want to make sure when you before you do any ranking stuff that the site is right. Is the linking structure correct? Is the user experience good? Is the content accurate and not copied content or uh, it's good quality? Mm-hmm. Um, the navigation is easy for both mobile and and uh, desktop. Um, people can you know get to a product or service in just a couple of clicks, make it real easy for them. Uh, make sure there's nothing spammy on the site. I mean, there's all kinds of stuff, conversion optimization. Um, and you can take some key stuff from AdWords to get some information there as to far what's, what's converting, what pages are, you know, if, if they're converting right at current, uh, you know, 1% or something like that, yeah. really low, then there's obviously issues there. There's no funnel or, or something like that. So that that's, that's kind of stuff that needs to be looked at too as an optimi- after as an SEO so or a search engine optimization for those of you who don't know what that stands for but <laughs> but um uh those things are key before you even rank a site because you might have to change up a structure of a site or move a page uh there might be four uh 301 redirects involved there might be all kinds of stuff new titles new um made it metadata all that stuff may change, and you want to make sure that everything is lined up perfectly before you start trying to rank the site. Yeah. Because you, nine times out of ten, you might find this site will rank after a, a page optimization has been done without doing anything else. Right. Uh, it could be that simple. Usually it's not, but... <laughs> Usually it's not. <laughs> you, and you might find conversions and everything else go up if, if you... When you're looking for a search engine optimization person, you're not just looking for somebody to rank your site. And that's one thing you need to look for. Yeah. Well, I, they need to have a an understanding or at least a team that can cover all levels of SEO. Because just like you said, you know, there's so many ranking factors when it comes to ranking your right. site and, and improving your rankings that if they just focus on one, they could be completely missing all these other aspects that will help your site. And just uh, making some adjustments uh, on your on page, you know, can definitely benefit uh uh, your website, your rankings can boost that. So, you know, if they need to have an understanding of all levels of SEO, whether it be technical, uh, on page, off page, uh, you know, all that kind of stuff, link building, uh, you know, structuring your site, uh, making it user friendly, the technical aspects of your website, all this kind of stuff. Uh, if it's an agency, you need to make sure they have a team that can cover all this and all that team is working on your website to whatever agreed upon. Uh, you know, and if you're working with an individual, make sure they have that complete understanding and they can communicate that with you, explain it to you. Uh, and, and, you know, because there's so much that goes into an SEO um, campaign, SEO efforts that you can't just focus on the one. It's all it's all pieces that fit together and they all have to fit together right for it to be moving in the right direction. Yeah. I mean, you might come across a site that's just a total redesign. Yeah. Just start from scratch. Make sure you know there's there's a whole thing a whole bunch of things in the back end and everything that are involved that need to be looked at uh, site speeds that type of thing that's a ranking factor uh SSLs all that kind of stuff that you you might have to 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 consider um yeah so if you're going to call in call in with your questions it doesn't have to be on SEO it could be anything digital the number is 855-722-0006 again it's 855-722-0006 Zero six with me today is Caleb McKelvin. What up, expert SEO guy and something myself, like that. Robert O'Haver, head janitor, <laughs> <laughs> custodian. Yeah. So, um, yeah, call in with your questions. Yes, sir. Unfortunately, we weren't on Blab today. We were going to broadcast from Blab, but there's a connection issue. Yeah, so. technical difficulties. I'm having yeah. some big issues. So, yeah. Oh well. And if you want to tweet at us at Search Talk Live, please feel free to do that. Love questions comments and concerns all of the above yeah so when you're considering an seo company kind of look for those things if they're if they're just talking about ranking or uh how much money you're going to pay them then you know those red flags yeah uh you need somebody that's passionate um that that knows knows the business it's yeah. been doing it for a while maybe even you know there's not a lot of companies that are going to give out their their client list you know for you to do referrals 
but you can do some research, you know, some reviews, look for reviews, look for negative comments, uh, those things, you have to do your research. And even, you know, you know, some things I've told people is if you get a quote from one SEO company and then they give you back a report, get another one from another company. Yeah. I, I usually don't like to say that, but it's true. Uh, especially in this industry, there's so many black hat guys out there that, you know, people are just don't know what they're talking about, but Hey, I'll charge you this and I'll do this. I'll rank you real high or whatever. <laughs> and people don't know, understand or understand that. So they just say, Oh sure. Okay. Right. That easy, huh? Right. Uh, but you have to do some work on your part. Yeah. To, if you really want to see results. And then the other recommendation, if you do decide to go with a company that's overseas, there's a lot of things you need to consider for that. There are some great companies overseas. Don't get me wrong. Now, when I'm when I'm talking about, you know, companies that are lower, that charge a lot less because they're, you know, like India or something like that. There's there's good companies out there, um, but there's also a lot of bad, just like here. But yeah. you you have no recourse if you go overseas with a company. Um, if you go to India and they screw up your site or they get you penalized, you have no recourse legally on those people. They just took your money and said, Oh, sorry, we didn't mean to do that. Um, but I mean, it, it, there, like I said, there's, there's, you just got to do your research, but, uh, yeah. So you got some questions, right, Caleb? Yeah, we did have some questions come in this week. Um, some pretty good ones, some kind of basic, uh, we'll go ahead and we can't get to all of them, but we'll get to a few of them that uh, we had come in. Uh, the first one that we had is what are some of the best tools that you guys use for link building? Hmm. We can go through that. Okay. I mean, I guess you don't listen to the show because Moz. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Moz is a great one to use. Uh, they're open, There's a ton of them. Yeah. Their open site explorer is pretty awesome. Uh, to analyze your own backlink profile uh, to see who's linking to you, what kind of links that you do have, uh, spam score of those links. Um, you can also research your competitors. Uh, Moz Bar, too. Yeah, Moz Bar is an awesome one to have on there. Plug in uh, for Chrome. Yeah. Uh, if you do not have that and you do perform link building or oh, have Moz Bar, go ahead and download it. It's pretty awesome. And you need to go listen to our past show when we had uh, the Moz guys on here. Cyrus and so, yeah, uh, John, John, John yeah. White, Cyrus Shepard, John White. Uh, those guys were awesome. Uh, we were really in depth on how those can benefit you uh, as far as SEO and digital marketing and outreach. Uh, so yeah, I would definitely check out Moz. Check out their Open Site Explorer. Uh, very cool. You can compare link metrics to you know some of your competitors. See who's linking to them. See opportunities. Uh, all that kind of stuff. SEM Rush. Uh, SEM Rush uh, is a great one. And then next. Uh, is it next week? No, week, no. week after next, the 1st of December, we're going to have Raven Tools yes, in here. Uh, yes, that was next on my list. Raven Tools yeah. is an awesome one. I've used that hands-on. It is a great tool to use. There's so much you can do with it. Um, finding link opportunities, uh, the, uh, the the benefit of those links, the authority of the links, uh, you know how relevant it, relevant it is to your site. Raven Tools is an awesome. That's an awesome tool to use for a lot of things. Yeah, uh, but especially for uh, link building, Majestic is another good one. Uh, it's uh, similar to kind of the Open Site Explorer dashboard, um, but maybe not. It's a little different, but a good one to use. Uh, I think for finding prospects, there's a lot of good things to use. Uh, help a reporter out. If you don't use that, it's a very cool tool to use. You basically get people asking questions, wanting insight, wanting quotes. Stuff like that, you get it straight to your inbox. You can reply right to them. Uh, it's an awesome one to use. It's something that I tend to use every single day. Uh, very cool one. Um, social networks is also a good one. Uh, Ahrefs. Yeah, Ahrefs is a very good one. Uh, A-H-R-E-F-S dot com. Uh, very cool in analyzing backlink profiles, competitor analysis, and all that kind of stuff. Uh, social media. Twitter, Facebook, Google+, all those kind of things. It's an awesome one for networking to creating those natural backlinks, people linking to you, stuff like that. Uh, Citation Labs is a very good one. Um, they have a tool called Link Prospector. So there's so much stuff to use. Uh, I will say my favorites, uh, Moz, Raven Tools, uh, Help a Reporter Out, 
Um, and there's one more tool that you can use if you are big into outreach, which obviously you should be because that's considered the, uh, you know, natural link building, outreaching to people, getting those natural authoritative links. Uh, I would definitely say use Buzzstream to keep yourself organized uh, and how you outreach to people, how you communicate to people. It's an awesome platform to use to keep yourself organized, to find uh, those people that you can contact, to build those relationships. So I would definitely look into Buzzstream. Uh, most of these are paid tools. Uh, I think Help a Reporter Out's free. Um, the other ones I think are paid, except yeah. for social media. But uh, you know, if you're really if you're really wanting to invest the time to to build those backlinks to have that healthy backlink profile, then I would definitely say uh, you need to at least be using one of those uh, for your for your efforts. Yeah. Um- you know, one thing I stumbled across today, I've never used it before, and uh, TweetDeck. Yeah. yeah. Twitter. I, uh, it You can monitor multiple accounts. You can schedule tweets. You can do all that kind of stuff with yep. it, and it's free. Yeah. So it's TweetDeck.Twitter.com, which is great. Um, great tool to use uh, that I've used since I've used it so far. <laughs> yeah. But, um, yeah, so what was the – I think we answered that question pretty good. Yeah, that was a good one. Uh you can definitely find some awesome tools. Those are very important ones to use. Uh, this one's kind of a loaded question. Um, How do we rank tomorrow? <laughs> <laughs> do I need to perform SEO on my site every day? That's kind of, that is a loaded That's question. a loaded question. I would say to some extent. I mean, it depends on what you consider. Because you could be like, it could be a... Uh, you know, you could be looking at analytics, you could be doing uh, multiple things and not really hands on the site type yeah. of thing. It depends on where you're at in the SEO. If you're new at it, I mean, if you're, I mean, if you're just, just starting the, the whole optimization process, absolutely. Right. Uh, you're going to get signals that, you know, things like, for example, you put a title tag and the title tag doesn't match what Google search results is. That usually means that Google doesn't like your title because maybe it's too spammy or, or whatever. It's keyword stuffed. So you, you have to go in and tweak that until you, uh, you see that eventually Google indexes it and uses the actual title you have. Uh, little things like that. You know, you just got to – you're constantly tweaking something on the site. I would say, yeah, at least yeah. Uh, at, at that point, definitely. Well, that's – I think that's where your analytics come into play. Yeah. You need to be able to understand what your analytics are telling you, how to interpret those, what needs to be changed, what's working, what's not working. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, understand what that dashboard, what all that information is providing you. And I think that with the on page, with uh, your off page, with your content, uh, with everything you have going on, you're going to be doing something almost daily. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you're yeah. going to be doing something Adding almost pages, daily. Adding doing pages, doing posts, yeah. whatever. Yeah. Uh, updating old information. Uh, you know, you can do content analysis. You can do link building uh, audit. You can do, you know, side outreach. audits. You yeah. can do outreach, uh, working your social media. So it's, it's a whole big bubble. It's a whole big umbrella. There's a lot to do. Um, you know, I've had my friends ask me consistently, so you just sit there and play on Facebook or you just sit there, <laughs> you know, and don't really do anything, search the web. Uh, that's kind of the mindset they have, but that is not it. Um, you know, there's, there is something that you can do every day if you're managing your own SEO on your own site. Um, well, you do outreach every day, don't you? Yeah, I do outreach every day. Um, something I really enjoy. I know a lot of people hate it. Um, <laughs> but, you know, I do outreach every day. I do you know, I write content every day. I do outreach every day. I'm networking every day. I'm consistently checking, uh, writing articles, you know, writing mm-hmm. articles, consistently checking what our analytics are telling us, uh, you know, what we're looking at, what's working, what's not working, developing a plan of action for, Research. uh, for, <laughs> yeah, developing a plan of action for how we can fix all the, the issues, uh, you know, testing things out. So, you know, I think it is something that you can do, you know, every day. So it, it's it's not something, it's not a set it and forget it kind of thing. Um, it's not a, okay, I got my site up. I got my descriptions, tags, titles, all this other stuff. So, all right, let the traffic 
come on, you know, it's, it's something that's going to take every day to, to grow your site, whatever you're doing, whether you're a, just a content site, an e-commerce site, there's always something that you can be doing. So yeah, you'll be working on it every day. Yeah. Uh, the number to call is 855-722-0006. Again, that's 855-722-0006. You can call in with your SEO questions. Uh, or <laughs> you can call in with uh, anything you might want to bring up as a topic. Sorry, I just took a picture of Caleb and my flash went off. Just blinded know. me. <laughs> but yeah, the um, you can call in with anything, basically. So yeah. I think that answered that question, right? Yeah, I extent. think so. It's kind of a broad it question. It is a broad question. I would say yes. The answer is yes. Yes, yes. Um, and, you know, there's a lot of good resources out there on um, what you need to be doing daily. Um, and so yeah, the I, SEO I, checklist. Yeah, I would definitely check that out. Uh, there's a, you know, there's a daily one. There's a how you can assess what your efforts, how you can, uh, um, you know, really dive into your plan of action if it's working what pieces are working so on and so forth uh you know so there's some really good ones out there from some really high uh, authoritative sites so i definitely check those out and you know and create a schedule for yourself create reminders for yourself create you know your plan of action on on what you're going to be doing on a daily basis yeah definitely all right let's see here the next one is a it's also a loaded question uh it's one i had to do some research on because i thought it was a really good question it says i feel like i put in the time and effort to create unique quality content but i'm not seeing any uh any results in rankings is there anything i can do to better my efforts now i kind of had to do some you know some sitting back and thinking about this because quality it's what it's all about it's about quality content it's about good quality content it's about you know uh benefiting the user answering the question providing the data providing all this stuff uh and you know it's all about quality content and then i kind of you know thought about it and said there's already so much quality content out there you don't realize every industry every niche every topic is so competitive because there's a lot of good resources out there. There's a lot of good sites that are providing quality content and it's probably been done a thousand times. Yeah. And so it can be really hard to, uh, to, to when you, even if you're providing that quality content to see results in rankings, traffic, and, and, you know, having users visiting your site. And so I kind of did some research and of course, who did I stumble upon when I was doing some research, but Mr. Rand Fishkin himself. <laughs> and he had an article said why good unique content needs to die and what should replace it and uh, that was kind of striking because all we've ever heard is good unique content you know and so uh it was a whiteboard friday and i did tweet it out so if you want to go to at cj underscore mce uh you can see the last thing i tweeted out because i thought it was really interesting because you know we're all about good unique content and i'll kind of break it down a little bit on what he said uh and it kind of opened my mind a little bit on my own efforts on what I'm trying to do as far as uh, providing content, content marketing, and so much uh, uh, as that is basically good, unique quali quality content has been the, uh, that's kind of the barrier. That's kind of the, the, the basis of what everybody's trying to reach. And that's not good enough. Good quality, unique content is not good enough. And so basically, and I'll cut it short is uh, well, why that's not important is because the user experience has changed. Earning links, uh, earning links rather than link building is more important now. Uh, there's so much content marketing going on. Uh, users expect so much out of the content that they're reading that if you're not providing that, then, you know, they're not going to read it. They're going to bounce off it quickly. It's not going to matter. They're going to go on to something else. And so there's so much factors that are going into, uh, you know, the quality content is a good enough. You have to exceed that now, and that needs to be your expectation. And that's really tough because that takes a lot of time and effort. Yeah. And, you know, if you're not willing to put in that time and effort, then you might not see those results. And so, uh, you know, this was really cool, and this is something I'm actually going to apply to myself. So hats off to Mr. Fishkin on these, is that he goes and he finds the whatever he wants to write about, uh, the content that he wants to rank for, the keywords that he wants to rank for, whatever it may be, 
he finds the top 10 best results and he analyzes each one. And he says, uh, you know, what questions are being asked and answered in that content? What user experience are they providing? Uh, you know, is it fast? Is it friendly? Uh, the layout of it, the design of it, what they're including in that content, the images, the videos, the quotes, so on and so forth. Uh, how detailed is it? Uh, what are they providing? Uh, you know, the quality of the writing so much that he analyzes everything. He asks himself questions and he goes through it. Uh, and it, I would encourage you to check this out. And then he kind of goes through his little checklist. And basically from that, he's able to create whether he's able to exceed that content, make better content, or whether he's not. And if he's not, then he kind of avoids it. And if he thinks he can, then he's going to go after it. And that's a pretty... That's good. I I think that's a pretty awesome mentality to have. Because there's so much content being out there that you're kind of beating a dead horse, uh, like we've said, that you're throwing good information out there, uh, but your competitors and others might be doing it much better than you are, even though that you have good quality your writing might be good, but your visuals, your, uh, you know, you don't might need to add some visuals. You might need to add some other mediums in your content that will boost it. And so you really need to do a, a, and kind of see what these sites are doing, see what's getting them ranked so high, see how they're uh, providing this content, what they have, you know, everything that you can. And then you have to really sit back and approach it to where, how am I going to do it better? And if you can't do it better, it might not be worth your time or you might need to sit back and say, well, okay, what do I need to have to do it better? And so, you know, that's something that's, that's taking that mindset when you're creating that content is it changes the game. And, you know, you might not waste your efforts towards something that, you know, you're not going to get ranked for. You're not going to see uh, rankings from to where you can really focus on, uh, quality. you know, quality and how you're going to really, uh, okay, I can do this. I can do this better than these people are than these sites are here's how I'm, here's what they did here's what they're missing and uh that's what uh, he says he asks himself a lot is what are they missing and what can you provide and can you meet what they're missing and so uh when you take that mentality i think it changes the game big time the only thing that it does is it takes so much time it takes so much effort and research uh but i think the benefits from it are going to be uh to exceed just shelling out content you know just wishy-washy content it might be good information you might reach a small audience but you might not see a big benefit from it to where you really focus on uh you know doing the research doing the writing providing the visuals you know the audio the video whatever it may be but putting in that time to put out that piece of content yeah i mean it's if it takes more time put out less articles but more quality you know what i'm saying yeah because you're you're going to hit your goal by going through all that i mean it's it's not a waste of time i would say yeah i think i I read an article uh uh it was a site that did an experiment they quit posting content for a month and they just focused on um promoting their current content updating stuff they thought was thin and they could do better right uh and they actually saw an increase in traffic Uh, They saw some boost in rankings. So, you know, it's, I don't necessarily think it's about how much you post and putting that content out there so much and and doing it so many times a day. Uh, I really think it's in the, the, the product that you're providing and, and, you know, what's going to benefit the user, the reader. uh, And, you know, is it something that they can, they can use for whatever they're searching for? Is it answering that question? Uh, You know, is it providing that service? Is it providing the, the, the data and information is it is it providing that stuff and to what extent and, and what quality is it doing that yeah i think it, you know if you even if you have a team of writers you know writing for one site or several sites or whatever it may be putting out you know you know twitter's not you're not going to lose twitter followers you're not going to use lose facebook followers if you only put out one a day or one every two days or whatever you know whatever capacity you're at right now but I think that that article, I mean, you did tweet it, right? Yes, I did tweet it out. Yeah. And it's called uh, Why Good Unique Content Needs to Die. And it's it's definitely, if you are into content marketing and uh, you're a writer, uh, uh, definitely something you need to read because I think it will change your mentality, your approach, uh, your plan, uh, you know, how you're going to develop content. Because... I think, you know, they always say natural link building. I think this is this is the best way to do that 
because if they're if they're going to find somebody else that provides what you're saying but is better then they're going to naturally link to them but if you can to really invest into a, a specific piece of content and really put the time the blood sweat and tears into it to make it better i think you're going to see re, a results from that not only from a ranking standpoint, but those natural links that you're wanting to build that you need to build that Google says is the only way you need to build links. I think those natural links are going to come. And so you really need to determine the, you know, what people are linking to as far as your, your competitors go, what people are wanting, uh, you know, how can you meet those needs? And so once you really do that analysis, that research and you put in that time and effort, you know, there's so many benefits that are going to come from that. Yeah. Now, we're down to the last nine minutes of the show, basically. Uh, if you want to call in with your questions, 855-722-0006. Option, option one. one. There yeah, you go. Yeah, option one. I keep leaving that out. Uh, call in with your questions. Yep. We'll try and answer them. Or if you just have a topic you want to talk about, we can do that, too. I'm, we're all game for that. Yeah. Um, does that cover all the questions? Uh, we do have one more. Awesome. If you want to go for it. Yes, I'm single. Um, no, okay. yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Are there any warning signs that my site could be heading for a manual penalty? Uh, yes. <laughs> yeah, there are. There are yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's it. No, no. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, Google Search Console. Yeah. You'll get you'll get notifications. Yeah, absolutely. If you if you have a manual penalty, well. There's two different levels of this. Now, if your site's not ranking for anything, you have a bad link profile. That's kind of one thing that's going to hurt, yeah. hurt you with Penguin. Unnatural links. Yeah. Um, There's a, a lot can lie in the links that you have on whether you're going to get a penalty or not. And uh, yeah. that's where a lot of people like to be deceptive, as in they're linking in and out. Or if, if you've done something wrong. Yeah. If you've been out there buying thousands of links or yeah. something like that, yeah, chances are you're going to get a penalty. Do not buy links. But um, on the other hand, if it's like a panda thing or something like that, you're not going to get a penalty for, say, unless you've copied content from another site and somebody's reported you or Google's picked up on it. Um, if it's duplicate content or something like that, you could drop in the ranks because of that. Um, but that's not really a pen. I mean, it's a penalty without a penalty, basically. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, poor content, poor quality, none of that's going to rank. Thin content. Yeah. Um, I always like to ask the question, Are is what you're doing, are your practices, are they being deceptive? Are the efforts of those trying to be deceptive to, as right. to you know, search engines, to crawlers? You know, are you trying to mask anything? Are you, you know, trying to build unnatural links? Are well, you, the sad thing is that with that, though, is like if they use a third-party company... They don't know. The site owner doesn't even know what's going yeah, on. Yeah, well, that's why we cover you need to really know yeah. who's doing your SEO and who you're hiring to do that um, because you really won't know until it's too late. Yeah, and, and I've actually turned clients away because of recommendations that I've given them that I felt really strong about, but they didn't want to do it. So, you know, sorry, I can't can't help you. You're going to yeah. have to go somewhere else. I mean, I, I, I'll turn clients away for that because – I, my goal is to make you successful, not to not to grab your paycheck or, or you know paycheck your payment. Yeah. Uh, you know, one time and then you were gone. That that does no good for me. I want somebody that's going to stick around because I did something good for them. I yeah. made you money or got you ranking high and or increased your conversion rates or right. something like that. You um, know, Google gives guidelines on what they consider spammy, on yeah. what they consider uh, you know what's going to get you into a penalty. Uh, so, I mean, they provide guidelines that you can go and read and, you know, they kind of put it all on paper and saying, here's what you don't need to do. Uh, they don't give you a roadmap to how you rank better in Google. Uh, they kind of let you fend that for yourself, but they tell you exactly what you don't need to be doing and what's going to get you a penalty. And so if you really, uh, if you're worried about it or you think, you know, hey, I might be heading for a penalty, I just don't know, what do I need to be looking for? They do provide those guidelines, uh, you know, which are very, and they, they really go in depth on uh what they are how they impact your site you know and if you're doing it here's you know here's how you're doing it and so but, i would definitely review those yeah but best advice i would say make sure you're on search console or webmaster yes. tools as it formerly was known as yeah 
but um, because that's the that should be the first thing you're on because that's Google's communication between you and what's going on with your site. Um, they're going to give you, uh, you know, it's going to tell you where your links are. Yeah. Uh, so if you see something out of whack, you can get take care of it, uh, disavow them or whatever if it's bad. Um, it's going to have, uh, you know, a million different things. It's going to tell you if your site map, there's there's an error on your site map, if there's uh, pages missing. If you have a manual penalty, it's got a section just for that. Um, and then Google Analytics. Tie those two together and make sure you have that together, uh, and you'll get a lot of information from that. Uh, if you definitely, if you get a manual penalty, which is rare nowadays, um, most of it's just you'll drop in ranks or you just won't rank at all. Yeah. Um, uh, now, especially with the uh, rank, rank mind, rank brain, rank brain. Rank I always brain. get that backwards yeah. or wrong. But I mean, like SEO agencies, the the bad ones. Which don't get me wrong. Don't think that all the SEO agencies are bad. There's actually some. Uh, oh, there's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> there's actually some awesome good ones. You know, some ones that provide excellent services that are fantastic. Um, that are uh, you know really really put in the effort and the time to to you know go through the, all the steps with you to to communicate with you to be transparent with you so on and so forth. But, you know, they, they, there's others that do certain things, whether it's, you know, cloaking, whether it's the keyword stuffing, whether it's whatever it may be. They, they have all these bad, you know, what, black hat practices, old practices and stuff like that. And so that's why you really got to be careful in who you're choosing to do your SEO services because, like Robert said, you'll it's too late. You know, when you actually find out or you actually get the penalty or whatever it may be, it's, it's too late. Yeah, but us as SEOs, you know, we stay tuned to the Black Hat community as well. Like, there's blackhat.com, I think. Black, I can't remember the URL. Anyway, yeah. I, 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 look, I, I subscribe to that because I want to know what's going on in the bad side and what's, what's happening. Because they're going to report. They're actually better at reporting bad things that happen than the, the White Hat SEOs. Yeah. But, uh, I mean, there's a lot of good information in there. We're down to three minutes of the show. Um, let's see. I think we've covered your covered questions, right? Yeah, that's that's the ones I chose for today. Some pretty good ones. I think got a lot of information out of that. Um, if you do want to call in the last few minutes, 855-722-0006. Option one, hit us up on Twitter at Search Talk Live. Yes, and you can reach uh, Caleb at CJ underscore. MCE. Yes, on Twitter. at your boy. You can, meet, you can reach me at Robert O'Haver, and that's R O B E R T O H A V E R. I've got to get a shorter one. Or you can hit us up at Search Talk Live uh, on Twitter as well. Yeah. And uh, let's see. Uh, you can hit us up. You can also email us, Robert at Search Talk Live and Caleb at Search Talk Live. Yeah, email us um, questions. We have some pretty good questions coming in throughout the week. That we always like to get to to our next show. So if you do have a question, please feel free to send us one, and uh, we'll answer it on air if yeah. we can. I think we're gonna end the show now, but uh, I want to thank everyone for your support in listening to the show. Yes, tune in and on uh, next week. I'm not sure what the topic is gonna be, but on the first, we're gonna have Raven Tools, the co-founder of Raven Tools, in here or not in here, but on the uh, phone with us, answering your questions. Um, and talking about their platform and how it works. And, uh, God, their reporting is awesome. Yes, it is. Um, which is a big pain point for SEOs. Uh, anyway, tune in next week. The show is every Tuesday at 3.30 Eastern Standard yep. Time. I'm Robert signing out. and I'm Caleb. <laughs> Have a good one. Have a good week. Bye. Search Talk Live is a presentation of the Robert Ballmer family of companies.